Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus this morning. We thank God for uh, another opportunity to come and share with you on, praise God, this Sunday morning. It is Sunday morning. It is February the 13th, the year of 2020. And I am Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship right here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God. So glad to be able to come and declare once again that Jesus Christ, he is Lord. Praise God. Now, and he's the answer to all of our problems if we would only put our trust in him, praise God, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. Praise God. That's the word of God. That's the word of God. If we would only adhere to the word of God and praise God. But, you know, I do have a word from the Lord just for you today. But now, before we cut into the word of God, if you recall on our last message after the Lord uh, recovered me from that um, COVID ep episode, uh, praise God, I brought you a message from first from uh, Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. That was on our pre last message there. And uh, in that message, uh, 4.12, uh, familiar passage of Scripture was, uh, the, the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing the sons of soul and spirit. Praise God, and and also it says in that that he that he uh that uh, he deals with the joints and the marrow. We dealt with that, the joints and the marrow. That was in our message that God put on our heart last week. How that word, God's powerful word, it divides, it pierces, it divides, it's 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 sawn asunder, and uh, also it separates joints and marrow. And you remember on last on this last message we. We we went and went into uh, we we dealt with uh, Jacob on the praise God on his journey and how Jacob um, well met that angel on the road he met an angel on the road and on the road they wrestled together and praise God uh, Jacob uh, uh, he told that angel that he wasn't going to let him go until he blessed him praise God he the angel came to bless him came to change his name praise God give him a new identity in the Lord but also he came to make him dependent upon God, dependent upon God. And we find out that there was a separation between John and Mara, how the angel hit him on his thigh and left him crippled. He halted because the flow of John and Mara was separated, and therefore it, he had a dead limb, more or less. And But that was God's way of blessing him. Now, I, I say that's because um, God blesses us in in, in ways that uh, sometimes we'll, you know, they're foreign to us. Sometimes, you know, we, we ask for a blessing, but then when the blessing come, we, uh, we want to reject the blessing. But dependent upon God is what God was doing in Jacob's life and what God has been doing in my life. God says, I've been trying to bring you. You know, all these many years, God has called me to preach and, and praise God. You know, I've trusted God, but I hadn't trusted him completely like I should. And therefore, this COVID was a wake-up call for me because it gave me an opportunity, uh, number one, praise God, to examine my life. Am I really trusting in God 100%? And I do, do realize that I come up short this morning. I come up short and I hadn't trusted God fully, fully, fully like I should. And that's basically because a lot of times, you know, we have hang-ups from our past life and uh, we have trusted, you know, in, and uh, people and there have been disappointments many times. And sometimes, you know, in our lives, we come to the point where we say, well, you know, I'm not going to trust man, period. I, you know, I'm just going to work hard. I'm going to do this year and I'm, I'm not going to trust anybody, you know. And uh, but now we don't realize that many times we exclude God in that whole situation. And I think in measure I've done that. And uh, in measure, God has been good to me because he called me, number one. He loves me, number two. And he has uh, given me opportunity to to come to this point. But now COVID has been a wake up call for me. It brought me to this point where I, 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 I say, Lord, will you help me to fully, completely trust you? And this is what the step that I've made. You know, I've worked all my life. I've worked uh, since a young, young teenager, worked all my life and, and you really enjoy working. But uh, we can't camouflage and hide behind work. So God uh, has had me to put in uh, my notice on my job and to, to let them know that uh, I'm through. I'm through. Uh, God has been good to me. God has financially been great to me. And uh, I'm through working anywhere but working for the Lord 24-7 all the time. So this is what God has brought me. And I just want to relate that to you because 
you know, there was a blessing for Jacob was that he halted on his side. He was left a cripple. He was left trusting in the Lord. That's the blessing there when we fully put our trust in God. So I just want to relate that to you this morning uh, before we get into our uh, message for today. But now today, praise God, thank God, we want to look at 1 John. 1 John. 1 John 4 and 17. And again, I do encourage you, praise God, look with me. Don't take my word for anything. Praise God. You look and see. Let God interpret his word to you. Don't you trust in what man says? Because there is bogus gospels out there. A whole bunch of bogus gospels. Sound good? Very good for each and ears. Huh? Very good. Praise God. It's like eating corn flakes every day, but there's no meat there. There's no real meat. There's nothing the Holy Spirit can bear witness. The Holy Spirit can use to, to, to enrich and build us up. There's a lot of so-called word out there, but now you study for yourself to show yourself approved unto God and let God interpret his word to you. Praise God. That's my word for you today. First John 4, 17. Look with me now. Get your Bible this Sunday morning. Praise God. Many of you are not in church this morning. And, and praise God. We, this is the time to study God's word. First John 4, 17. And it reads, another familiar passage of scripture. It is. Praise God. Uh, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Could I read that again? Praise God. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. Let's bow here for a word of prayer. Father, I bless you today. Lord, I thank you for being such a loving God, such a kind God, patient God. I thank you, Lord, for your great love that you have shed abroad and brought in my heart, Father. And Lord God, I just pray, Lord, that as we look into the mirror of your word today, I pray the Holy Spirit may come and, 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 and begin to illuminate us, open our understanding, Father. Speak to our hearts, Lord. And, and sometimes, Lord, we need a word of encouragement. And Lord, sometimes we need a word that will tear us out of our frame. Lord, but you, you, you do what you see fit to do through this word that you put on my heart. And Lord God, I give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise God. But now, 1 John 4, 1 John 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As Christ is, so are we. That's our subject, very simply. As Christ is, so are we on this Sunday morning, right this very moment. Amen. And let me say this at the beginning. This is this is part one of a two-part study. We're going to do a two-part here. Praise God, Pastor's going to have a lot more time on his hands. So uh, we'll be coming forth here. We'll be, we'll be rolling now. We'll be rolling. But this is part one of two in this study on this particular subject from this particular passage of scripture for first John 4 17. And today we, we're gonna only uh just more or less try to introduce you to this subject. A, a, a short, somewhat short introduction. And uh when I say short, you know a lot of people laugh when I say short because many, many people don't believe I can do anything short. And uh I I, I guess in in a way they're right. But now this is gonna be by any by any means this is gonna be an introduction to this great uh, text here in this subject, as Christ is, so are we. But now, as we study the Word of God, it's important that we understand the purpose. First of all, the purpose of God's love and God's grace. God's love and God's grace that he's poured out upon uh, all of mankind. Praise God. But now, especially, praise God, the love and the grace that God has poured out upon his believers his children. It's important that we understand the purpose of God's love and of God's grace. Praise God. Now, what is God's purpose? His purpose basically is that uh, we as believers might be conformed, conformed to the image. Praise God, the very image of his dear son. That's God's purpose for his children. He wants me to be conformed to the very image of his dear son. 
son. That's God's purpose for his children and in, in many ways for mankind. But now we, we, we must understand, praise God, that, that God the Father uh, chose him a people. Now, it's good to have a good overview of the word of God. What is it all about? The whole about Genesis to Revelation. God chose him a people, a people in the eternal uh, council, uh, the election council uh, before the world were ever created. Hmm? God chose him a people. And not only that, but he predestined his people to salvation. He did all this in eternity now, in eternity, before the world was even, even, even made. That's right. And the scripture confirms, it, it, it confirms this uh, great truth here. Now, if, if we examine just uh, Ephesians 1, let's look at a couple of scriptures there that confirms the fact that God has chosen him a people, predestined him a people in eternity before the world was, before we ever sinned, before we done any good or any bad, before we were even born, God had a purpose. God had a plan. Look at Ephesians 1. Turn with me in your Bible now, and I want you to stay with me. We're not going to be very long this morning, but we're going to be thorough this morning. Amen. We're going to be, we're going to be bold this morning. Amen. Ephesians 1 and look at 3 there. Ephesians 1, 3 and 4. 3 and 4. And to read, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. In Christ. Our blessings in Christ. Look at verse 4 there. According as he had chosen us in Christ. In him before when? Before the foundation of the world that we should be holy, holy, without blame, without blame, before him. Praise God in love. That's what it's about, in love. But now this is one of the many scriptures that uh, confirms the fact that God has chosen him a people. And he's predestined these people to salvation. And I thank God that I'm part of that group. I, I'm part of that group. God chose me. Praise God. And some 50 years ago, he confirmed it when he called me, praise God, to be not only a messenger, but to be a bona fide child of God. And I thank God for that. I have that assurance in my heart. Praise God. And as I related earlier, I'm sure that in many ways I've disappointed the Lord. Praise God in not trusting him fully and trusting him completely. But thank God, praise God, we can see a little clearly right now. But now another scripture that confirms it is Romans 8. And we're familiar with Romans 8, all of us. We don't even, you, most of us don't even have to turn there, do we? Romans 8, 29. For whom he did foreknow, for whom God did know before time. For no, he also did predestinate. To be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn, Christ might be the firstborn among many brethren, the firstborn among many brethren. So now, what do we say? And what do we see so far? We see here that God the Father chose us. I'm talking about the believers now. If you're truly saved, I'm not talking about church folks. Now, y'all know I know the difference, don't you? Because I've been going to church all my life. I know the difference now. But now we see that God the Father chose us, the, uh, those the believers, that is. And then God the Son redeemed us. God chose us, the Father. God the Son redeemed us with his precious blood, his own blood, his own precious blood. Amen. And uh, scripture very plainly with that throughout. Now, but look at Ephesians. We'll just look at Ephesians 5. Let's turn to Ephesians 5. And praise God, this, this is your study for this Sunday morning if you are uh, in the home, in the house today and not you are not out to, in the fellowship today. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27. He, again, husband, love your wives. How? Even as Christ loved the church hmm? and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word, and that he might present it to himself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. A glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Praise God. So now, so once again, what are we looking at? We're looking at the fact that how, uh, that God the Father chose us. Believers, praise God. Rejoice together now. You ought to thank God for that. God the Father chose us. God the Son redeemed us. 
praise God. And next, praise God, right now, uh, unfolding as I speak to you right now, God the Holy Spirit, he's regenerating. He had regenerated many of us. He regenerated us. He calls us. That's who calls us out of darkness into the marvelous light. That's who calls us into the mighty presence of this great God that we serve. He calls us. He gives us faith to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit does that. And not only that, praise God, he keeps us. He keeps us each and every day, every hour from hurt, harm, and danger. Praise God. And you can believe that if something happens to a child of God, Praise God, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. There's a message. There's a message for God's children when he allow any kind of situation to come upon us. Do we get the message? That's the question. Have we, do we search our hearts? Do we search our hearts when we find calamities or situations come upon us? Do we sit down and say, well, well Father, what is it? What is it, Father? And let him show you. Why you are now been brought to a position of dependence upon him. That's so important. Amen. But now, again, again, God the Father chose us, right? Okay, God chose us. The Son redeemed us. The Holy Spirit regenerates us, calls us, gives us the saving faith. See, all, all faith is not saving faith, but he gives us saving faith that we can trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, praise God, he keeps us in God's love and grace. He keeps us. Praise God. He keeps us in that grace. Look at Jude 24. Most of us know it by, by memory, but you can, praise God. I'm talking about the power of the Holy Spirit here now. Praise God. Our uh, paraclete here. Praise God. He says here, Jude 24 says, Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God. Be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. He's able, praise God. That's his job, to keep us. He's a keeper. Hmm? Father, God the Father, he chose us. God the Son redeems us. God the Holy Spirit keeps us, instructs us, teaches us. Praise God, brings us into a deeper walk, a deeper knowledge, a deeper understanding of God's word. And hey, praise God, I thank God for him. I thank God for him in my life today, each and every hour. Amen. But now, here in our text again now, uh, 1 John 4, 17, here in our text again, the Apostle John tells us that God's purpose for his people is now, right now. Right now, right now, as I speak, now accomplished in us is accomplished in us is accomplished for us right now. Hmm? Praise God. As he is, he says, so are we in this world. That means right now, as he is, it's, it's already accomplished is what he said by way of our union, our fellowship, our union with Christ. Praise God. And, 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 and praise God. That's simply because, again, Whatever he is, as he is, so are we. Praise God. We take on the image, conforming to the image of God's dear son today. And I'm so happy about it. Praise God. I'm glad about it. Amen. But now, before we try to go any lot deeper into this text, which we are, we're going we're gonna to turn a lot, a lot of uh, leaves over as we deal with this one verse here. But now, before we go any deeper, uh, uh, John began this 1 John 4, 17. 1 John 4, 17, that's where we are back there now again. He began to, uh, uh, by making a statement, and that statement is this here. First of all, he says, herein is our love made perfect. Herein is our love made perfect. Now, that's the way he begins. He begins this um, uh, uh, this particular scripture here. And I love John's writing. I, I really do love John's writing. Praise God, all of his writings. Uh, Gospel of John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, Book of Revelation. I love all of his writings, amen, because of his affectionate heart. He was a very affectionate type of person. Had a, uh, uh, he, he had a very close relationship with the Lord, a relationship that, was available to all 12 of the disciples. Huh? But John gravitated toward him, praise God, uh, more than any of the other disciples. Matter of fact, he even John was even so bold. He was so bold that he would, uh, praise God, even when Christ would set, he would 
you know, get close to him, sit close to him. And, and, and eventually, you know, like a kid, he, I think he probably would pick at his clothes and, and just kind of move, moving things around and touch him and touch him. And, 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 and finally, praise God, I think he finally just did, would just lay his head down over on his shoulder or uh, lay his head on his breast. He was so affectionate, more than any of the other disciples. He was like an old big baby. That's, that's what I call John. He's a big baby. But uh, in all of his writings, love, the topic of love seems to be the grand, grand topic there. Love, love. God's love for us. Praise God. Our love toward God. And we see that, in, for instance, in 1 John. Turn to 1 John 3. Love. Love is the theme. Love is the thing. And mostly God's love for us. And uh, when, it's when we, in turn, uh, show love toward him. Look at 1 John 3 there. 1 John 3. And we're going to look at verse 1. Praise God. Look at verse 1. Let me dial him up. We'll find him here somewhere. Uh, 1 John 3, 1. And it read, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knew us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be. Huh? But we know that he that 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 when he shall appear now, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And scripture verse three says, three says, and every man that hath this hope in him, if you got this hope in you, you purify yourself. You purify yourself. And that's what he said, even as we are pure. Praise God. That's not just John now talking about the love, the love, what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us. But now if you look down at 1 John uh, 3.16 also, then that, uh, another one of my uh, scriptures that I like when John expounds on God's great love for us. Praise God. Here, uh, 1 John 3.16, 1 John 3.16, he says, hereby proceed with the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Mm -hmm. Praise God. We perceive the love of God in that how he laid down his life for us. But now again, look at First John 4. Praise God. First John, one more. I'm going to look at one more here. Uh, John, the great expounder of love. Praise God. I mean, he experienced the love. He, he listened to the heartbeat of Jesus Christ in the flesh. God in the flesh there. Look at 1 John 4 and 9 through 12 there, 9 through 12. In this, he says in verse 9, in this was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Hmm? Look at 10. Herein is love. Not that we love God, but that God loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Look at verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought to love one another. Verse 12. No man has seen God in any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected. In us, what the world need now is love, sweet love. Huh? We wouldn't have all the killing. We wouldn't have the wars. We wouldn't have the rumors of wars. We wouldn't have the crooked politicians sitting in Washington D.C. padding their pockets and never getting enough of millions and millions of dollars. We wouldn't have a. Uh, we wouldn't have uh, the the control that are uh, being perpetrated upon the people throughout the world today. We wouldn't have this if there was the love of Christ. If we would accept it, oh, it's here. It's available, but they won't accept it, though. Praise God. And of course, the scripture just fulfilling itself. He came into his own, his own received them not. Praise God. But now, let us be very, I want to be very clear here. When we talk about love, the love of the Lord, uh, when the Apostle John says that our love is made perfect in this text here, our love, he is by no means insinuating that our love, our love for the Lord is at any time in this life perfect. Never. Our love for the Lord is never at any time can be said to be perfect. Now, but now what John is saying, praise God, is that the believer, though, the believer, when we're saved, we receive a perfect knowledge and revelation of the breadth, the length, the height, the depth of the love of Christ. We receive all this at salvation. 
Praise God. And we do know, praise God, we knew know that, know that we are truly loved of the Lord. That knowledge comes to us. And I know, I know, no matter what happened in my life, I know that I'm loved. I'm loved of the Lord. Do you know that regardless of what, what takes place? Praise God. If it's COVID, then that doesn't mean that God don't love you. Praise God. We got to understand that. But now the many blessings and benefits that uh, uh, we as true believers enjoy today, the benefits, the grace, the blessings we enjoy today is a direct result, a direct result of our position in Christ. Listen, I say, I say our position in Christ, our blessing has nothing to do with your behavior, though we are sanctified and we do strive to live holy and sanctified in life. But now you, you don't base God's grace poured on you based on your uh, goodness, but it's on our position in Christ. I, well, I hope y'all can grab a hold of that. Praise God. It's where we stand today in Christ, hmm? in Christ, through Christ, that will uh, determine the grace that's poured out upon us. Praise God. And I don't think, I don't think we can, praise God. We don't think we can say this enough. I don't think we, I don't think we do say it enough. Amen. Praise God. We have a tendency to believe that. Praise God. I'm, I'm, I'm blessed because of what I do. No, you are blessed because of who you are. If you're a true child of God in Jesus Christ, God sees Christ in me, the hope of glory. God's not looking at you. You're not nothing nice to look at, and neither am I myself. Praise God. But look at Romans 5. Romans 5. Let's listen to Romans 5. Hallelujah. I'm just having a good time on this Sunday morning here. Praise God. Look at Romans 5, 1 through 2. 1 through 5. I'm going to go 1 through 5, not just 2. And it read thusly, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have access by whom we have access, you know what I said, by faith, into this grace wherein we stand. We stand. It's where we stand. Where do we stand? In grace. In Christ. Hmm? That's where we stand. And then because of that, we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation. Also, knowing that tribulation works in patience. Patience works experience. Experience works hope. And hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts through the Holy Ghost, which God has given unto us. Praise God. Again, I want the believers. I want you believers to know. I want you believers. If you're a true believer, I want you to know. Pray. It's where we stand now. It's where we stand. It's our position. Praise God. In Christ, that determines the flow, the flow of God's blessings, the flow of God's grace, the flow of God's mercy into our lives. Praise God. Amen. But then now, before we, before we uh, uh, get into the meat of this text now, we, like I said, we just kind of introducing, praise God, and sharing a little testimony with you today uh, before we get into the meat of this text. I'm talking about 1 John 4, 17. First John 4, 17, the apostle talked about something else in this verse uh, that is very important. Uh, besides the love of God here, he talks, he says again in 4, 17, herein is the love of God made perfect uh, in us that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Boldness, Ooh, praise God, boldness in the day of judgment, boldness in the face of all situations. Mm, and, and, and COVID, boldness in the face of COVID. If you're saved, praise God, we're a child of God. Amen. That you might have boldness. Now, now there is a day coming. There is a day coming appointed by God. When we, when, when, when he, we, he going to judge the world. The Bible says he'll judge the world in righteousness. That's what the Bible said. And in that day, all unbelievers, that's what the scripture said. If you're unbelieving, you're going to tremble. Praise God. You're going to tremble in fear. Praise God, the fearful, and uh, praise God, while the born-again believers, born-again believers, praise God, like the apostle John states right here, we're going to be bold, hallelujah, in the day of judgment, bold and fearless, confident, even joyful in that day, praise God, in that day, praise God, and that day is surely, surely going to come. Look at Psalms 96 in your Bibles. Let's look at 96. I'm just going to look at a few verses there. Psalms 96, uh, 11 through 13, the psalmist here, he seems to wonderfully capture this event. 
and the reactions of people in that day. Uh, uh, look at uh, Psalms 96, 11. Let the heavens rejoice, he says, and let the earth be glad. Let the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the field be joyful. All that is their end. Then let all the trees of the wood rejoice. Why well, trees? Now we're talking about people, y'all. Of course, we're talking about people here. Before the Lord, for he cometh. For he cometh to judge the earth. Mm. He shall judge the world in righteousness, the psalmist said. And the people, he'll judge the people with truth. Hmm? No, that's the psalmist uh, as he captured uh, this judgment that, uh, praise God, the apostle John talks about. Now, well, and we who are in Christ, though, uh, we should, uh, we should, and I say that again, we should, we should look forward to the day of judgment that he talks about here. Praise God. And not only just look forward to it, but with confidence. Look with confidence. Look with confidence. Look with joy. Boldness. Praise God, while the unsaved, the Bible said the unsaved in this world are going to be crying out to the rock, to the mountain. Praise God, to fall on us, hide us, cover us from the wrath of the Lamb of God. That's what they're going to be squalling and hollering. Amen. But again, we're going to be bold as a lion hmm? in that day of judgment, in that day of judgment. And we will stand before our maker, hallelujah, as an innocent, praise God, guiltless, sinless, perfectly righteous saint of God. God. That's what we're going to stand. Hmm? We're going to be standing in Christ. Amen. Praise God. We will stand in complete freedom. Complete freedom. 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 That word That word is taking a beat today. Is that right? Hmm? They're trying to take all our freedom away from us today. It's nationwide. Look at the protests. They're marching. Why? They, they, they want freedom. They want freedom. They want freedom. And the devil, one thing the devil don't like is the people of God to have the freedom to make the choices. Huh? And we got a concerted effort throughout this world today. All the leaders from Washington, D.C. to uh, Germany's parliament, praise God, what do they want? Take freedom away from the people. But I thank God that we have complete freedom, the same freedom that our Lord enjoys today. This very moment, praise God, before the throne of God right now, Praise God. And in case you may be saying to yourself, praise God, how, 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 how is this preacher going to be so bold? Why are you so bold, preacher? Why do you got so much confidence in, in that day? Well, because of 1 John 4, 17, our text today, as he is, so are we in this world. Praise God. Not later on, after a while, by and by. Now, in this world. Now, not tomorrow. Now. Praise God. Now, forever. Praise God. There will be no fear in that day of judgment because our eyes is going to be fixed on the Lord. Praise God, the perfect one, not ourselves, not ourselves. We're going to look completely away from ourselves and we're going to look directly uh, to the Lord. Praise God. That's what it's all about. But now, because he is what? He is perfect love, perfect love and perfect love. What the Bible says about perfect love? Perfect love casted out all fear, all fear, no fear. No fear, praise God, no fear of nothing that could come upon us in this life, not as long as we keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Now, as we see that day approaching, talk about that judgment day approaching, and my question is to you, are you ready? Are you ready, though? Are you ready? You know, and when we say judgment day, a lot of people seem to look at a uh, day when the whole world will just, bam, collapse, and there will be nothing else. But now, your judgment day may be today. Your judgment day, my judgment day, may be today. Hmm? Because if God uh, takes the breath out of our bodies today, then your judgment day has already come. Praise God. My question to you, are you ready for that day? Huh? The Bible said no man know the day nor the hour. Praise God. When God will close the book, the chapter of our lives. My question to you is, do you know Jesus though? Huh? Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you put your trust, full trust in him? That's the question that you got to answer today. Amen? And praise God. It, 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 it's just a matter of you and me repenting of our sins. Jesus came and died for our sins, and we must turn from our sins. We must repent of our sins. We must receive God's forgiveness 
for our sins. And in return, God will bring his spirit into our hearts and God will give us peace and joy that pass all understanding. You can have that today. Oh yes, today you can have it. Huh? The moment you hear my voice, harden not your heart. When we humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God, God will lift us up. We have wanted to do that today. Praise God. But now, now this is only part one now. This is only part one of uh, two parts in this subject here. Praise God. As he is, so are we in this world. And in our last segment that we are going to do, praise God, probably going to be on Wednesday. Probably be on Wednesday. Uh, no, I'm, I'm tired. Probably going to be on Tuesday. Probably be on Tuesday somewhere in that neighborhood. In our last segment there, praise God, uh, we're going to get deeper into this uh, 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 1 John 4, 7, 4, 4, 12 here. As he is, so are we. How is he? How is he? Praise God. Well, he's the begotten son, and so are we. He's loved of the Father, and so are we. Praise God. He's God's elect, so are we. He's well pleasing to the Father, so are we. He's free from sin, so are we. He's a stranger in this world, so are we. He's Jehovah's servant, and so are we. We're going to look at all these different areas here on uh, Tuesday. Praise God. But now, uh, until that time, let's pray, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, for uh, Lord, for just how you have spoken to my heart, Lord, during this uh, uh, semi-crisis that I had to go through. And, Lord, I thank you that, uh, Lord, you showed me that uh, you re uh, uh, want complete trust and dependence upon you, Father. And, Lord, I thank you for it right now. I pray that this word, Lord, might go forth into the hearts of your people, Lord. And I pray that we might bring come to a so total surrender to you today. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you like this video, praise God, go over and hit that like button over there. And then you can go over and hit the subscribe button. And when I, when I do come again on Tuesday, praise God, I'll bring you the conclusion of this great word. And praise God, I'll bring you some encouraging word directly from our Lord. I want you to know that our God is great. Our God is a healer. Our God is a deliverer if we put our trust in him. Praise God. But until that time, may God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer today. Amen.